The chairman of these Seahawks raising the 12th man flag. January 18th, 2015, Seattle, Washington. You know the story by heart. The Packers are up 16-0 at halftime. Russell Wilson throws four interceptions, but Rodgers and McCarthy keep settling for field goals. Morgan Barnett falls to the ground. You remember the whole game, play for play, and the climax, or at least what could have been the climax, but wasn't the climax. We have two minutes and nine seconds to Seahawks line up for the onside kick, and if Green Bay recovers, the game is over. Aaron Rodgers gets to go to another Super Bowl, by the way. Of course, he never goes to another Super Bowl in the next decade, and he gets to play Tom Brady. Tom Brady for all the marbles. Here's the kick. The ball's in the air. What would you trade me for Brandon Bostic to catch that ball? Or just to do his job so Jordy Nelson can do his. Okay, let's make a deal. Bostic will catch the ball if the Packers, in perpetuity, change their colors to gray and black. Or pink and blue, or pick a color. Good deal? Want to shake on it? Good deal? What, you're not shaking my hand. What's that? That's not a good deal? What if I added a dome and Ashtar to Lambeau Field? Do you like that deal better? Do we have a deal? Is that a good deal? Okay, so... Why not? Why is that a bad deal? Why aren't you taking that deal? It's a bad deal precisely because some things are much more important than any single play or any single player. And the identity of the Green Bay Packers is directly tied to how they look on TV and on the field. Now, some of us may take it for granted because it's all we know, it's all we ever known, but the brand of the Packers is timeless continuity. The same team in the same city in the same stadium with the same uniform with the same colors, usually with the same quarterback. Even people who aren't Green Bay fans generally have a favorable relationship with the Packers brand because, again, they know what to expect. Since before there was color TV, we've been wearing green jerseys with white numbers at home and white jerseys with green numbers on the road with the pants and the helmet always the color of cheese always it's a striking singular look that over time has become more revered as teams throughout sports sell out they sell out to nike they sell out to other outfitters for relevance and merch sales it makes the packers along with the cowboys steelers chiefs raiders niners and bears when they don't do this special unique Excellent. We're still wearing the Reebok mesh template from two decades ago with that beautiful striped collar accented by the NFL shield. No tricked out accessories. No extra lettering above the numbers. No visual pollution. It's a look that cannot be meaningfully improved upon and it has been part of the legend. The iconography along with the cheese heads and Lombardi and team stock and everything else you know. So with all this in mind, why exactly do we want a white helmet? What amount of money could possibly justify such a thing? Side point, you know what's even worse than Drew Holiday going to the Celtics, remaining a winning player while Dame was sad and out of shape all year? Well, well, it's the fact that Boston won a title respecting their brand, reaffirming their brand for a new generation, looking like the Boston Celtics of Bird, Russell, Pierce, and all those guys, while we won a title looking like a back-the-blue who bit up team. And right now, as I was considering how to make this into a 15-minute video, the Packers' Twitter account released this to go along with the Matt and Leak and the Paul Lucas reporting from months ago. So let me try to summarize my objection here. Ultimately, the thing about selling out is, once you do it once with no pushback, you're guaranteed to do it again. And let's be clear, I'm sure this all-white look in a vacuum will be okay looking, but... Again, we don't live in a vacuum, and that's not the point. That's not the point. It doesn't matter how icy fresh the look is or isn't. It doesn't matter how many players like it. It doesn't matter how many other teams water down their brand. We're supposed to be the Green Bay Packers. Haven't we spent enough money, Mark Murphy? Like, have, have we supported the team enough for you? Is there something else we can do for you? Can you print some more stock as opposed to ruining everything and taking us further down this slippery slope to irrelevance. So what should we do? If we have to do anything for special occasions, we should bring back that Lynn Dickey, James Lofton era look. It's just different enough. The numbers on the pants are marvelous, and it reinforces the historical nature of the team. The Packers as a brand should always be looking backwards, not forwards. You don't modernize a Civil War reenactment. I have no idea if the current rules allow it, but we could also throw back to the superior gray face bars and Lombardi era, of like, like the football shape G. There's things we could do. Now, I've spoken before about Ron Wolf's misguided attempt to modernize the Packer look, but that's not the only time fan backlash has stopped a really bad idea from seeing the field. And now, maybe you recall the brief saga of the 91 49ers rebrand that never happened. In that case, it, it took only a week and the whole thing was killed. 
But the truth is, we've all got more important things to worry about right now, and I'm guessing either a small majority or a sizable minority of fans are going to be super excited, stoked for white cheddar. Just don't come crying back to me when we get a blue cheese version next year and an all-black coming soon and jersey patches on the way. Everything is for sale.